What's going on guys? This is Ryan with RK Outpost and just as people were starting to get excited about Superman and DC with the Snyder Cut coming out and the return of Henry Cavill in Zack Snyder's Justice League or even the premiere of Superman and Lois on CW which has actually received pretty well by both critics and audiences alike especially for how Superman was portrayed. You have people excited about Superman and then DC does this. Warner Brothers does this. J.J. Abrams, we knew he was going to pop up. We knew he had this big contract with DC. Well, now he is here to absolutely destroy any hope that this franchise had. Superman reboot in the works at Warner Brothers with Ta-Nehisi Coates writing, J.J. Abrams producing. Now, J.J. Abrams is bad enough. He may not even be the worst part of this entire thing. The writer, Ta-Nehisi Coates, I know a lot of you may not know that name because he's kind of irrelevant, but what he is is a far-left racist ideologue. That is who this man is. We're going to go over some of the things he says, some of the things that he thinks, and this is the absolute worst person to possibly put on a Superman movie. First of all, he's never done any work on the screen before, be it TV or film, unless you count the documentary based on his book. But second of all, the idea that you are putting this man on Superman tells us so many things. And the idea that Henry Cavill is just not going to be a part of this is insane. Henry Cavill is becoming one of the biggest stars in the world, and he wants to be Superman. Warner Brothers and DC has basically just told him to go fuck off because Henry Cavill is not attached to this project and in all likelihood, this will be Black Superman, which we are going to get all into here. Deadline has confirmed that author Ta-Nehisi Coates is writing a Superman reboot feature at Warner Brothers in DC, which J.J. Abrams is producing under his Bad Reboot label. Uh, Coates is attached to a Ryan Coogler directed drama featuring entitled Wrong Answer about a math teacher in Atlanta who's scandalized when he looks to get funding for his school by altering his students' test scores. Michael Jordan is attached to Wrong Answer. We're going to talk about Michael B. Jordan because he is an important component in what is going to come out of this. I do think he will be Superman in the near future. And this tells you a little bit about Ta-Nehisi Coates, where he came from. As the national correspondent for The Atlantic, he covered cultural, social, and political issues, specifically that of African Americans and white supremacy. Of course he did. His 2014 cover story for the publication, The Case for Reparations, started a national conversation on this subject. He's also written for The Village Voice, Time, and contributed to New York Times, Washington Post, and more. His nonfiction books include The Beautiful Struggle, Between the World and Me, and We Were Eight Years in Power, An American Tragedy. All of these preach about race. All of these are completely obsessed about race, talking about how the white man has been keeping the black man down. I wish I were exaggerating. I wish I were lying. But this is who Ta-Nehisi Coates is, to be quite honest with you. And if you want to go, we can go hear this Bounding in a Comics article. Warner Media reportedly hires left-wing political activist Ta-Nehisi Coates to write new Superman movie. Because we do have some of his quotes. We should really find some of the things that he's said. Uh, the most recent piece published in January 19, 2021 is titled, Donald Trump is out. Are we ready to talk about how he got in? And it, he publishes an excerpt of a previous article titled, The First White President. In the excerpt, he describes President Donald Trump as a white supremacist. This is the type of person we're dealing with. This is how fringe and radicalized this person is who is coming to write one of the most iconic characters of all time. DC, what the fuck are you doing? Not only J.J. Abrams, destroyer of franchises, the lead producer of this movie, probably heavily involved in all this to be quite honest with you, but now you bring in this guy to write it. This sends a clear message to everyone that there is no hope for DC. Uh, listen, I love Zack Snyder. I, I'm looking so forward to Zack Snyder's Justice League. But he has said so himself that, listen, Warner Brothers just is not interested in anything else DC from me at this time. And now the Snyder Cut could be an incredible success. There could be a lot of demand for it. Anything can happen. But at this point in time... They're solely focused on moving on with whatever J.J. Abrams has in mind for the DC Universe. Think of how insane that is, especially with all the hype right now for Zack Snyder and what he is doing. Just an incredible mistake from these people. Uh, it's often says that Trump has no real ideology, which is not true. His ideology is white supremacy. That is literally what this man is talking about. 
In his book, Between the World and Me, Coates writes, White America is a syndicate array to protect its exclusive power and to dominate and control our bodies. And listen to what he said about first responders during 9-11. This is the type of person we're talking about. They were not human to me. Black, white, whatever, they were just menaces of nature. They were the fire, the comet, the storm, which could, with no justification, shatter my body. That's what this man thinks about the brave people who responded during 9-11. What an absolute piece of garbage. And he also puts his politics in his comic books that he writes. Because he wrote for Black Panther and for Captain America. Uh, what does he do for Captain America? An example from his current runs, he's a supposed friend. Give him a lecture on white privilege. You're a great guy, Steve. Possibly the best. But you've never been denied a job because of who you are. Never had a neighbor think you were less of a person because of your skin color. Or been told to go back to your own country. So that is what this dude is, trying to tell Captain America about his white privilege in his own book. He puts everything, all of his politics, into these things. Now, when it comes, when it comes to black Superman, because that is a big part of this story as well, this is not going to be Clark Kent in all likelihood. I do think it is going to be Calvin Ellis. And I think that Michael B. Jordan may very well likely be attached to this project. And what is the reason? It's because he's expressed interest in that before, and we know Michael B. Jordan spoke to Warner Brothers a few years ago about this very same thing. I want to listen to what he says, and honestly, I like Michael B. Jordan's take on this, but I think it's going to be a problem with who's running it. Let's listen. I heard a rumor, there's been this buzz, that you're going to be the next Superman. Yeah, that was, that was a rumor. I heard that. I heard that. <laughs> I did. I heard that. I heard, I, heard, I heard a few rumors buzzing around. I think just to be in those conversations... It's flattering and very humbling that they would like. Would you, you know, like to be Superman? <laughs> it's tough. You know why? Because I hate being a businessman also and like understanding both sides of, of the situation. And I yeah. think there's a huge upside to it. But then there's just being under that microscope of just being picked apart and compared to so many different versions of Superman. I, I and th this is the part that I think is interesting, and I, I agree with him. I've talked about this interview before. I talked about this uh, maybe a year ago, maybe eight months ago, something like that. I would, I would rather do something original. Really? But... But the yeah. chance to be Superman... But, I mean, it's, it's cool. ...in your skin... I'll be Calvin... I'll be Calvin... And that's the thing. Oprah is all about race-swapping the character. That's what she is thinking about. But listen to what Michael B. Jordan responds as. I'll be Calvin. I'll be Calvin Ellis. You know, there's a, there's another version of Superman that from Earth 23. I'm a comic book guy. Okay. You know, so Calvin Ellis is like you know Earth 23. I don't there know who you're talking about, but so okay. This, so, so. And I just had a little moment where I'm like, am I going to act like I know what he's saying? <laughs> Do I just do that little kind of, oh yeah, Calvin, oh yeah, 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 there, oh yeah. There's, a, there's another version of Superman in another dimension that is black already in the comic books that exist. And I think the, 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 the comic book you know, purists can accept that more than me being uh, you know, Clark Kent from Kansas. And yeah. I, 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 that's, a different, that's a different thing. So. Yeah, and that, like, honestly, listen, in a vacuum, if that was what was going to happen, right? Um, I don't really have much of a problem with that. I think that makes sense. I don't really want to see Calvin Ellis. I don't think Calvin Ellis is very interesting. Neither did DC fans, to be quite honest with you. But if that's what they were going to do, you know what? Go for it. But the problem is, what they are doing is they are going to ignore Henry Cavill. They are not going to do anything for Henry Cavill. Instead, they're going to reboot it and make him Superman. Now, whether this is a black Clark Kent, whether it is Calvin Ellis, this is going to be the new Superman going forward. They need to have... They should have Henry Cavill locked up to three figure or three pictures right now, but they don't. We did hear some reports out there, but honestly, with everything we've heard, it doesn't sound like that's very true. Maybe they do. Maybe they'll do two different Supermans at the same time. I just can't see that happening, especially not with J.J. Abrams working on this one. This is going to be Superman Prime. Henry Cavill is in all likelihood out, which is a shame because they are going to focus on identity politics. They are going to focus on this game, which they are not going to win. It is going to fail if they do this. And then they're going to blame people for being racist. They're going to blame it because, oh, it was just the color of their skin. They couldn't handle a black Superman. You have a Superman right now in Henry Cavill who is in high, high demand and you are ignoring him to push this. That is the problem. And the, f the real problem is that everything is based on identity right now. Everything is based on the color of your skin, your gender, and who you like to fuck. That's it. That's what Hollywood is all about right now.
Vice telling a good story. And this is devastating news for DC fans who are excited. This comes one day before uh, IGN Fan Fest. It's going to be Zack Snyder heavy. Uh, you can't help but wonder if that was planned in any way to try to, you know, throw water on that. Because we know at Warner, there are a ton of people that do not like Zack Snyder and do not want him to succeed. But uh, just more bad news for DC fans. But it shouldn't be a surprise because this is Warner Brothers and this is J.J. Abrams. Let me know your thoughts on all this in the comments below. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell for notifications, share this video out there, and I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching, everyone. And a huge shout out to my patrons. I appreciate you guys so much. Want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram? Check out the description below. You'll find links to my P.O. Box and my Patreon as well. And I'll talk to you guys later.